I'm Dave and this is Logan out once again for a walk on the New Forest. Thanks for joining us. Now today we're at a place called Ocknell Pond which is just to the west of Stony Cross just north of the A31. I'll put a map up on screen that might be easier to give you an idea of the location. And today we're going to be doing a, a roughly four mile circular route to the south of here across Ocknell Plain. Uh, going to see if we can find one of the celebrity oak trees of the New Forest called the Spreading Oak. And then we're going to go through a, a large wooded enclosure and who knows what else we might find along the way. So do join us. We're filming what the middle of July. It's quarter past seven in the morning. The sun's out, blue skies, no clouds. It's going to be a really good day weather-wise. Well, I've parked my car at the uh, Forestry Commission car park at uh, Ocknell Pond. If the barrier is ever closed, you could always use the uh, Forestry Commission car park across the road at uh, Cadman's Pool. Now, the pond is directly behind me. And let me show it to you. But, as you can see, it's completely bone dry. And that's quite common during the summer. Uh, fortunately, the um, Cadman's Pool is always uh, full. That's an artificial uh, pond for the livestock. But uh, this particular pond is quite an, an ancient one. It appears on um, some of the very old maps. I've got a map that goes back to 1815 and it's on there. And it's got a little bit of a, a story attached to it. Uh, you might recall the story of the Rufus Stone, which isn't too far from here actually. If you're not too sure, I have done a walk there and a video, so do check it out. But in a nutshell, it's uh, where it was originally thought that King Rufus, or William II, was murdered by Sir Walter Tyrrell. Historians these days reckon that the actual murder took place at Bewley, some miles away, but that's by the by. But going back to the original story, after uh, Tyrrell murdered, uh, allegedly, <laughs> King Rufus, as he was fleeing from the scene, he passed by this pond and washed his hands to get rid of uh, Rufus's blood. Anyway, legend has it that on the anniversary of that uh, date, which was the what, 2nd of August, I think, 1100, the pond turns blood red. Well, that's all very well, but it's about three weeks to go until the 2nd of August. I don't know about turning blood red. I'll be surprised if there's any water here. <laughs> anyway, that's that story. Well, as I make my way across the dry bed of the pond, uh, I'm just going to start making my way south. You'll notice uh, just along here, there's uh, little bits of um, concrete. And this relates to the fact that, well, back in the Second World War, there was uh, an RAF airfield based here and uh, indeed I have done a, a short video of that. I'll put the, the link at the end uh, or in the details below. But uh, So I won't go into any great, great detail there, but just uh, you see the little bit of evidence floating around. Look down here, this is a, get out of the way of my shadow, uh, a metal uh, ring and that was used to uh, tie down aeroplanes. Of course this was a little a little um, aircraft dispersal area. We're right on the southern edge of where the airfield used to be. Uh, some ponies happily grazing in the background. I expect we'll see a few of those today. Okay, so we're now going to start heading south. making our way south across uh, Ocknell Plain. There's a lovely breeze which is uh, cooling it down, just what the doctor ordered. It is gorgeous today. I keep going on about this blue sky but it's quite lovely. And there we've got the ponies grazing away. Look at this tree. It uh, looks as though it's had a bad hair day. Of course it's uh, this predominant southwest wind 
makes it that shape. And if I just bear the camera around a bit, this is uh, looking north and northeast. That's the Ocno enclosure on the right. Quite an old plantation established in 1768 with oak and beech. It's about 99 hectares, but it was never really cleared or, or say clear felled after that. So it's become a, a plantation that has very much evolved into pasture woodland. Well, just coming uh, to the end of the Ocknell Plain and uh, you can probably hear a, a road in the background. That's the, uh, the A31. It's a major dual carriageway that crosses the forest. This little plantation on my left is called Winding Stonard. Not sure of its origin. And, uh, interesting, we've been following a, a little track and look down here, there's some, um, looks like the uh, foundations of a building right in the middle of the track, just following along there. I wonder if this has got anything to do with the, um, the old RAF airfield, although we're a good, look, there's another bit of brickwork there, I say although we're a good, well, probably half a mile away from where the actual airfield was. A lot of the support um, buildings were on the outskirts, so this may have been one of those. Okay, well, we're going to carry on heading uh, south. We're not going to cross the A31, <laughs> thankfully, but um, we're going to start heading west once we get there. But uh, say so there isn't a uh, this isn't motorway, but it's a very busy dual carriageway, one of the main routes that takes traffic down to the uh, the West Country. Fortunately, there are um, always plenty of fencing both sides to protect uh, livestock from going on the road. And they do have underpasses, which we're about to have a look at. And here indeed is one of the uh, aforementioned underpasses which also serves as you can see as a, a pony pound part of the system they use when they're doing the annual roundup of ponies in the uh, the pony drift this looks as though it's been refurbished quite recently so what we'll do is go underneath the, uh, the underpass it's got to go a little bit dark for a second or two I expect and a bit echoey but uh, I think it'll be worth it when we get through because there'll be an excellent view on the other side and here we are merging into the sunlight again wow look at that ignore the noise of the busy road traffic behind me but isn't that beautiful hopefully the the sun isn't glaring too much into the picture. A couple of ponies over there. But that's uh, one well, the far distance on the left is Puck Pits enclosure. And then on the right, that's the Boulderwood Walk. And just looking to the side here, where this fencing is, you can see the, the system that they use for with the roundup. They'll corral and funnel the ponies up along this path and then through the underpass and then into the uh, collecting area on the other side. Well, let me introduce you to one of the uh, celebrity trees of the forest, the spreading oak, and she's just behind me here. And uh, lovely old lady, she's, goodness knows how many centuries she's been here. She's got her own little spot on an ordnance survey map her girth's round about six metres, I believe. And you can see she's been pollarded in the past. That's where they cut them at about the two metre level. And then all the branches will grow out from there. But, oh, I bet you she could tell a few stories. Fairly well protected up on a ridge here, surrounded by other trees. Although, uh, <laughs> what she felt about having the A31 built alongside her in the 1960s is another matter altogether. I'm just looking up, I can see 
Oh, there's a little hollow there, and oh, there's loads of bees going in there. I reckon there's a bee's nest in there. Yeah, I see them popping in and out. But uh, oh, I, I do love these old trees. Just say goodbye to the spreading oak there. I did read somewhere that um, you know, you look at a tree that size, it'll produce hundreds of acorns each year, and of course, most of them will be eaten by pigs and squirrels and the like. And, and you need, even if they do get into the ground as saplings, the, the deer will get them. But uh, I say, according to this article, one only one acorn uh, every 20 years from that tree will actually make it to a fully grown tree. Extraordinary <laughs> lack of success. Right, well, we're going to carry on heading uh, west along this track. It's lovely to see the purple in the heather beginning to, to come out now. That'll keep the, uh, the bees happy. Oh, what have we got down here? Well, looks like the remains of an old puff ball. Pretty sure that's what it is. Okay, let's uh, kick on. Uh lovely sight little foal there I'm not going to get any closer than this because um, I like to give a lot of distance and uh, let them get on with things looks like it's a little boy by the looks of things <laughs> but, uh, it'll be quite interesting to see what happens next year with the uh, the number of foals on the forest they reduced uh, the number of stallions from 15 to 10 they let them out sort of May, June time to do their thing as it were. So um, they've uh, been off the forest for you know quite a few weeks now. But I think the idea was to reduce the number of foals born this time next year because of worries of the economy. So uh, making the most of all the lovely foals this year. <laughs> Real cutie. Morning ladies. <laughs> okay, so we're just in the far distance, we're just about to come up to an enclosure that's called the Slufters Enclosure, which is quite a, an old one. Well, established 1862 at 145 hectares. The hectare, by the way, is well, 2.47 acres from memory. But, uh, it um, and on my map, which is about 30 years old, this is much more heavily, sort of densely populated with trees, but they've obviously done quite a bit of cutback here. Originally it was planted with oak and beech, um, but then a lot of conifers planted in the 1950s and 1960s. Uh, this is just the outskirts of the old enclosure. How about this for... <laughs> a lovely old gate post that's probably been there 170, 180 years or so. And then, yeah, if I turn around, you can just see the uh, the old original enclosure bank and ditch that would have it would have had a, a fence, a wooden fence on top of that for the first 30 or 40 years or so of the enclosure to protect it from livestock. But as we just come through here. You can see, as I get caught round with my lead, <laughs> uh, you can see the um, all these tree stumps where they've uh, cut this particular area back and doesn't look as though they're going to be replanting. There we go, there's one there for example. But it allows other wildlife back and a bit of grazing for the ponies as well as you can see. Just about across this little stream in the middle of the enclosure. And this is called um, Bratley Water. In fact the source uh, isn't too far from here, a few hundred yards or so upstream. 
And this will eventually join the Blackensford Brook and then it goes on to become the Blackwater, then Fletcher's Water and oh, finally it'll make its way out, um, well it joins the Lymington River and then makes its way out into the sea. I always love to come and find these little streams or the, you know, their sources. I think what a journey some of this water's going to have to make. <laughs> And obviously a good place for the cattle to drink as well. <laughs> oh, this is interesting. You can see uh, these are heather bales that are put in to dam up streams and pegged in place. And look, there's some more over there. And the idea behind it is to really slow down the flow of water in the stream stop erosion. Indeed if you look behind there's an area that's been uh, cut back, all the trees removed. Of course when the trees were there the roots would have absorbed all the water and the moisture but now if you get any heavy rain it's just going to gush and flow off downhill. So the bales are there just to say to slow up the the speed of the water going down. Well our second pony pound of the walk. Quite a big one as well. And uh, well, looks like there's a little memorial plaque. David Stagg. But uh, yeah the, I reckon this is probably one of the biggest pounds in the forest. Certainly pro perhaps only the pony sales yard at uh, Bewley Road might be a bit bigger but um, certainly the the pound area or just over there is certainly quite big. Oh wow look at that stunning rowan tree with its uh, orange berries that will be turning red in a few weeks time. So pretty. But, uh, I love the the rustic nature of these um, uh, pony pounds and that, that's deliberately done just to make it a little bit less stressful for the uh, ponies when they are rounded up. Now heading our way back north on the homeward leg of the walk. It's been a really beautiful morning today. I think it's going to be a 24, 26 degrees later on. But uh, and, uh, again, we've pretty much had the place to ourselves. But, uh, a really quite exquisite part of the forest to do what I'd call a, a, a foresty heathland sort of walk if you know what I mean. Now oh look at this tree over here. <laughs> now I know it's uh, it's seen better days but uh, well, it has its own little unique spot on the landscape doesn't it? I think that'll be a good place to do our end scene from as well. We can well folks we've come to the end of our walk. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did please give us a thumbs up or like and do make a comment and as I already always say if you haven't uh, subscribed uh, please do so then hopefully you'll be able to join us for another walk sometime in the future. I should just say I think we're over 300 subscribers now so thank you to everybody that, that has subscribed. It's really really great. We've had a super walk today, I so said the weather's been spot on, the sun's been out, blue skies, nice little breeze, the temperature has been spot on. We have seen the odd squirrel or two haven't we? <laughs> so until we meet again, thanks for watching and cheerio.